Hi everyone. In this video, I want to discuss this medium difficulty weak in the argument critical reasoning question. This is an interesting question in terms of you know thinking of it as a learning exercise because it has a cause effect, it has a comparison relationship based on a study. So it helps you really understand how to typically approach arguments that are almost completely based on a study result. If you haven't solved the argument, then I encourage you to pause the video, check out the question in the description box, answer it, and then listen to the explanations. What do we have in this argument? A recent study published in a leading medical journal claimed that consuming moderate amounts of chocolate daily can reduce the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Right. So this is ultimately the conclusion in the argument. What is the point that we are making? If you have a moderate amount of chocolate consumption on a daily basis, then that reduces the risk of diabetes. The rest of the argument, if you read through it, actually explains this study and what happened as part of the study. What did they do? They followed 1000 participants over a period of 5 years. They found that those who consume between 10 and 30 grams, so it explains what they mean by moderate amounts of chocolate daily, had a 30% lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes compared to those who consume no chocolate or did so very rarely. So you seem to have had a some sort of control group as part of the study. Some of these 1000 participants did not consume any chocolate. Some of them consumed moderate amounts daily and they found that the group that consumed moderate amounts daily actually ended up having a 30% lower risk of type 2 diabetes. They are also theorizing as to what the process that le probably led to this. They are talking about how the flavonoids that are present in the chocolate may help improve insulin sensitivity and glucose metabolism thereby lowering the risk of diabetes. Right. So you sort of understand the overall argument, you have two groups of people that we are talking about, one group that consumed chocolate, one group that didn't and we are identifying that the group that did consume chocolates actually had a 30% lower risk of diabetes and that's where we are getting this conclusion in the argument from. If you have a quick look at the question, it says to question the credibility of the conclusion. So you want to question the credibility of the conclusion which means you need to point out that the conclusion need not be valid, need not be credible or in other words you need to weaken the argument. So what should you point out if you wanted to weaken the argument? That's the question. We'll come to the answer options in just a bit. Let's talk about sort of process the information in the argument. So what is our conclusion? If you consume moderate amount of chocolates on a daily basis, right? You can't just consume whatever you want. It has to be between 10 and 30 grams. And then that leads to a decrease in your risk of diabetes, right? That's what the ultimate argument is. Now, if you think about this, you can think of this as a causal relationship, you can think of this as a comparison relationship in the argument, you have both in this argument. Why do I have a comparison relationship? I have a comparison relationship because the study had multiple pa the participants split into multiple groups. You had people consuming chocolates and you had people not consuming chocolates. So you're comparing them in terms of their risk of diabetes in order to arrive at the conclusion. So we're essentially saying that people who consume moderate amounts of chocolates are better off right than the people who consumed no chocolates or rarely consumed chocolates better off in what sense we're not talking about them being better off in their overall health so if you had an answer option that talked about you know the cardiovascular health of these two groups of people that would be completely irrelevant to the conclusion the conclusion is not that chocolate is awesome for you in general the conclusion is that chocolate is good for you if you're lower for in order to lower the risk of diabetes so it's specific to diabetes which means we should stay within the scope of the discussion in the argument right so if you want to weaken this comparison relationship you need to point out that there could be differences between these two groups that people who consume moderate amount of chocolates could have also done something else that helped them sort of decrease their risk of diabetes so it essentially pointing out it need not be the chocolate that is responsible or there could be factors that you didn't you did not control for other than for the consumption of chocolates and so on so you could point out that there are some comparison errors in the author's reasoning and therefore a that the comparison relationship is invalid having established that the comparison relationship which serves as the basis for the conclusion is invalid you would also be questioning the credibility of the conclusion you also have a causal relationship the causal relationship is essentially the process that you are explaining how the flavonoids in the chocolate are leading to an increase in insulin sensitivity an increase in glucose metabolism which increase is which in turn is leading to a decrease in the risk for diabetes so you can point out that the increase in, sens in insulin sensitivity and the increase in glucose metabolism could have happened because of other reasons as well not necessarily because of chocolate consumption 
so one of these or a combination of these targeting this causal and comparison relationships in the argument is what you are looking for of course you also have a generalization relationship in the argument where your the author is going from you know something that is true for the thousand study participants being equal for everybody because yes, if you go back and look at the conclusion he's just saying that consuming moderate amount of chocolates daily can reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes we're not specifying that this is for a particular group of people the conclusion is generic we're saying that anybody who consumes chocolate will be able to lower their risk not necessarily just these thousand people it could be that the demographics of the thousand people are not representative of the world population it could be that it is representative of the world population if it is representative for everybody then yes the consuming chocolate can work for everybody but if it's representative for only one group of people then none of the group of people who consume chocolates may not see the same results right any of these will weaken the author's you know conclusion so let's look at our answer options the participants who consumed no chocolate had a healthier lifestyle at the beginning of the five-year period than those who consume chocolates very rarely or daily so the biggest problem with this answer option is you're talking about the beginning of the five-year period who what matters who had a healthier lifestyle at the beginning of the five-year period this is about a healthier lifestyle that too it is not even about what sort of you know chances of getting diabetes you had at the beginning of the study right this talks about people who had a healthier lifestyle not necessarily a significant healthier life lifestyle significantly healthier lifestyle right so my problem is we're not talking about during the study during the study the people who consume chocolate could have had an improvement in their health in their lifestyle during the study people who consume chocolates sorry did not consume chocolates or consumed chocolates rarely could have had a deterioration in their health in their lifestyle could have had a deterioration in their health and other factors that can contribute to type 2 diabetes so you're not addressing what happened during the study you're talking about how much health they had or what sort of lifestyle they had actually at the beginning of the study irrelevant answer option you can go ahead and eliminate it the flavonoids found in chocolate are also present in other foods that were not considered in the study now consider a conclusion where we are saying that the chocolates are the only way only way for what to reduce your risk of diabetes or a conclusion where we are saying that the chocolates are the best way to reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes if that had been the conclusion saying that it's the only way or the best way is also a comparison with other ways in which you could be reducing your risk of diabetes so then you can point out you know what exercising regularly actually has a bigger impact than chocolates some other foods actually have an even better or an equivalent effect than chocolates pointing that out will help if this had been your conclusion your conclusion had been that chocolate consuming chocolate is the best absolute only method in order to reduce your risk but that's not your conclusion we are not saying consuming chocolate is the only thing that will work we are saying that consuming chocolate works so what does it matter whether in the study we talked about other foods or not those other foods can also work sure that doesn't mean chocolates won't work chocolates still have flavonoids chocolates will still lead to an decrease in your risk you have not targeted the current conclusion as it is so this is also irrelevant to our discussion such an answer option will work only if your conclusion had been along these lines the study was funded by a major chocolate manufacturer potentially introducing bias into the research um potentially introducing bias does not mean that there was actually bias also what you have is a quantified result as part of this study you might have seen other arguments where such an answer option about bias could have been the right answer usually answer options that talk about bias work when you have qualitative research say i'm doing a survey and i'm doing a survey asking you what are your perceptions of something right then um you know if you were if for example influencer marketing right you if, if an influencer is marketing a product they're sharing their perceptions of the product i tried this it worked for me i liked it blah 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 now if they are paid to do that promotion then you start questioning whether they truly did like the product or not right so there if somebody is funding their video there is a potential for bias because they are sharing qualitative opinions about something my point here is if your research is qualitative bias can have a role to play when it's a quantifiable research like you have here this is again irrelevant to our discussion moving on participants who consumed moderate amounts of chocolates daily were more likely to engage in regular physical activity which also boosts glucose metabolism than those who consume no chocolate so people who consume moderate amounts of chocolate 
were also more than the people who consumed no chocolates likely to engage in terms of physical activity was higher for them okay now i could have had an answer option that said people who were engaging in you know having moderate amounts of chocolate were more prone to wearing blue shirts any difference between these two groups is not of any importance to us right need not necessarily work what does blue shirts have to do with type 2 diabetes but physical activity and the beauty about this answer option is it doesn't require you to make assumptions it doesn't require you to have any knowledge about you know fitness and so on it clearly says physical activity also boosts glucose metabolism so we're not just talking about some random difference between these two groups are we we're talking about something that has an impact on glucose metabolism and why does that matter because the last sentence of the argument if you remember said the flavonoids in the chocolate are leading to an increase in insulin sensitivity and glucose metabolism which in turn is leading to a decrease in type 2 diabetes risk of type 2 diabetes so glucose metabolism is a factor that is ultimately impacting our final conclusion about the chances of you getting diabetes so physical activity is also a difference between these two people chocolate consumption is one difference physical activity is one difference the people who are consuming chocolates are also engaging in physical activity and both of these both chocolate consumption and physical activity lead to a increase in glucose metabolism so now can i say with confidence that chocolates are responsible for the increase in glucose metabolism and therefore for the decrease in the risk not necessarily it could have also been the physical activity that was responsible so now you have pointed out that there is another factor that you didn't control for between the two groups and that's the amount of physical activity that they did and this is an important factor because it also has an impact on the risk of diabetes so it, it targets the causal relationship it targets the comparison relationship both at the same time and is a very on point answer so we'll hold on to delta have a quick look at echo the participants of the study were required to self report the amount of chocolate that they consumed daily when we read a word such as self report immediately our head goes to oh that means they were lying about the amount of chocolates that they had my point is the answer option only says that they were asked to self report it does not say that they therefore lied unfortunately i've seen a lot of test takers interpret this answer option to mean that they therefore lied so immediately in their head they are going oh so that means people who said they did not consume chocolates could have also consumed chocolates and lied about it so you have one group of people who consume chocolates another group of people also consuming chocolates but lying about it and if only one group saw an improvement in their metabolism glucose metabolism and you know risk of type 2 diabetes it's probably not the chocolate because this group also had chocolates the answer option does not say that they lied about it it only says that they self reported so don't make unnecessary assumptions reading more into the passage reading more into the argument to reading more into the answer options than the answer options are suggesting right so if they are self reporting but without assuming that they are lying about it does that affect the results of our study so what if they self reported i consume chocolates and i tell people i don't consume chocolates and i tell people that as well it doesn't have an impact on the results of the study irrelevant answer option which means delta is pretty much the only option that works and is your correct answer